Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, March 17th. Hope everybody's having a great St. Patrick's Day. Uh, earlier this week, uh, I know, I know you, I'm sure you noticed there was a, a little bit of a technology issue when we switched over to our new server, to our new host. Uh, some of the alerts were not being received by text message. So, I mean, that, you know, technology is, is great when it works, but sometimes it's not always perfect. And that's exactly why we always post the alerts on the site. We send them by email and we send them by text message to make sure that, uh, that they're getting through in one direction or another. So all of that is good to go now, though. Thanks for your patience. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you should be able to receive, receive them by all three avenues uh, from this point on. So all good. Um, first trade we made, let's jump into the trades. First trade we made was in DIA. So we bought a calendar spread. We take a look at, uh, at where that is. Pretty well centered, as you can see. Uh, we're down a little bit on the on the trade, even though it's even though it's pretty well centered, and that's just purely due to volatility. Uh, with volatility going down, obviously that's going to hurt the calendar spread position. So, uh, if you didn't get into that trade and you still want to, uh, you're probably going to get in at a much better price than than we did. Uh, so that's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes we'll get better fills. Sometimes you'll get better fills. It all works out in the end. So if you're still interested in that one, good good pricing to get in. Next trade we made was in natural gas. It was a, a closing trade. So we had, uh, we had an iron condor on and price started moving all the way down, broke through our break even. So we took off our call side and then it price reversed and started moving back up. And so we took off the put side. So we took off the put side for a, for a nice profit, took off the call side for basically max profit, ended up with about a 75% of max profit gain on that uh, natural gas iron condor. So that was a great trade. Next trade of the week was in, uh, was a was in a, a closing trade in TLT. So we had a, a calendar spread on there, uh, adjusted it, added another calendar, kept moving down, and uh, we got really close to expiration on the on the front month, which was right here. So we actually we finally we just needed a little bit of a move up. We finally got a little pop up, so we took it off on this day with three days left to expiration. Um, Obviously, if we would have to this day, we would have, we would have got out of the trade for a for a gain overall. But obviously, we're we're getting down to crunch time. I don't like to be in trades that close to expiration, uh, but we're looking for a little bit of a move up. So we got out of that one for a small loss. If you did wait a day, you got out for a profit, uh, but then you've only got two days. So you're kind of you're kind of playing with fire there, depending on what the what the underlying symbol does. Uh, within just a day or two. And so you want to be real careful with that. Uh, ended up okay on the trade, taking a, taking a small loss overall. Next closing trade was in XRT. We closed out of that strangle, made about 35% of max profit in just eight days. So that was a nice quick, quick profit for us. Uh, FXE, closed that for about 40% of max profit. Another nice trade. Uh, that was an iron condor. Uh, in IWM, another closing trade, uh, took this off, it was a butterfly, took that off for about 24% of debit paid. We want to take those off for around 20%. Had a nice move down that day in IWM, uh, gave us a chance to, to take that off for about 24% of, of debit paid, which was just great. Uh, another closing trade, so kind of a theme here. We took a lot of trades off the board, banked some nice profits. Uh, the problem is everything's got low implied volatility, so that's good for current positions, right? That that helps us uh, profit, but as far as opportunity for putting on new positions, we didn't have as many opportunity for opening trades. So this was in QQQ. This was a calendar spread. Uh, again, we were getting down to crunch time with only two days to expiration in the front month. I'd been trying to get filled on this position, uh, but but didn't get filled and finally got I was able to get filled so we got out of that for a for a nice profit about 20 percent of max profit uh actually no that a little bit less about um let's take a look i think i i think i put it on here uh yeah about 15 percent of of debit paid so 
Um, so that was on the QQQ calendar. Next trade was in uh, was an opening trade in wheat. So again, uh, as I mentioned here, the premium is not extremely high, but still a good risk reward ratio. You've got to keep putting on positions. Just do it really, really small. Uh, the, the wheat iron condor we still have on, um, and it's pretty well centered. So not much profit or loss on that one. Just, just kind of playing the waiting game on wheat. Next trade was in uh, was a closing adjusting trade. So I sent that this out in two separate alerts. One was to uh, buy the strangle back. So we had an inverted strangle in natural gas, and we simply just closed that out and then rolled it. Basically, entered a new uh, strangle in natural gas. So one question I did get, and remember, you got to use UNG uh, to to look at the uh, implied volatility. And it was right up here around 25, 27, kind of in this range when we made that adjustment. One question I got from a member was, do we really want to reestablish a new strangle in the next month with implied volatility under 50? And, and what I would tell you is this, if you have a lot of trading opportunities available, if there, there's a lot of high V opportunities and other things, then I would say no. We, we could have just closed that out and moved on and redeployed that capital into other trades. But with implied volatility so low in everything else, I mean, if you look at the, the stock indes, indices like SPY, I mean, we're, net, we're, we're around zero, right? We're at two, one and two right now. So based on that, you know, needing to have positions on, when we were at kind of 20, 25 in, in natural gas, I would say that's relative to everything else, that's fairly high. And so that's why I repositioned that, that strangle into the, into the next month because we've got the capital, we've got uh, you know, very few positions on, very small positions. And so doing that in, in what has kind of the highest IV available is, is the prudent thing to do. Next trade was in, uh, uh, was today was in uh, IWM. So this was a, a directional position. Again, when applied volatility is low, you're looking to stay engaged, put on positions. We needed a little bit of long delta as our as our positions have moved around. We've we've kind of built up a little bit more short delta than I than I want. So I added some long delta into our overall portfolio. And the symbol of choice was IBM. So if we take a look at IBM. What you'll see here is, uh, you know, it's had a it's had a really strong run up, and it's, then it's had this little pullback. So, the thought is, if you you know get in here, if it, it continues higher, you're going to benefit from this trade. So, not only is it is it adding the long delta that we need in our portfolio, having that bullish assumption, uh, I think it was a, a good point to get in because if we do get a a, a rise back up, kind of to retest these highs. We're going to be able to we're going to be able to take that off and, and bank the profit in that. So kind of twofold, good uh, a good point to get in in my opinion. And second, adding long delta to the overall portfolio. So that's the thought process behind the IBM trade. And last, we adjusted our strangle in EWW. So prices continue to move up on us, and so we just simply rolled our puts from the 45 up to the 49. Stayed in, stayed in April, so we weren't rolling out. We were simply just rolling our puts from 45 up to 49. So if we take a look at EWW, as you can see, it's just had a couple pretty big moves to the upside here. And so this is what our position looks like now. It's an inverted strangle, meaning the puts are higher than the calls. And so we're just, we're waiting for a little bit of a move down or for price to kind of settle in and let that theta decay work in our favor. If we're still in this position and we get closer to um, expiration, even even in that kind of 20 to 15 to 20 days to expiration, we'll probably roll this entire position out to the next cycle, depending on where implied volatility is. Now remember, we also have a, another strangle in EWW uh, that's doing okay. It's it's kind of making its way to the upper upper end of our uh, payout diagram, but still centered enough. Nothing to do here except for except for weight.
So those were all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions we have. Uh, we've got another iron condor in natural gas. Uh, we've got uh, a decent little profit in there, but slight move down and we'll be able to take this off for our what we're looking for, which is about 40% of max profit in natural gas. Uh, I already went over the strangle. This is the, this is the one that we rolled out to the May cycle. Uh, obviously very centered still, not enough profit to take that off yet. With corn, we've got a couple positions on in here. One is uh, we had a, an iron condor on, uh, price moved all the way down through our break even. So we took off our call side for max profit. Now we're just looking for a little bit of a bounce back to get out of the put side. Um, this is pretty close to expiration. As you can see, the uh, uh, it's got seven days left. So early next week, I like to be out of this it, it, before the you know I like to be out of this in the last week of expiration if we're in a situation like this. So we'll be looking to aggressively take this off. We could take it off right now and be at about a scratch or maybe a small loss on the overall iron condor. If we get a move up, uh, we'll, we'll take that off for a nice nice profit. So continue to monitor that. If it does move down, uh, there's no other way to adjust this. So we're just going to, um, um, we're not going to roll it to the next cycle. We'll simply take it off for loss and then potentially reposition in May, which we already do have another iron condor in May. Uh, pretty centered, uh, not enough profit to take off. So we'll continue to watch that as well. Wheat, I already mentioned that one. Apple, uh, just pretty fairly centered here, down a little bit on that uh, rolled uh, debit spread. So we're still looking for a down move in Apple. So we'll continue to hold that one. I mentioned DIA, EWW, FXE. That was a closing trade we took off. We don't have a current position in FXE. GLD, we put on a calendar spread. It is right here, kind of moving towards our upper side. It actually... So when we put it on, it's, it's, it's centered right here at 16, 16.16. It actually moved down. It actually touched our break even here, but not enough to, to warrant the, uh, the additional uh, adjustment. I wanted to see if it, it would bounce back first or what it was going to do, and it, and it did. And now it's bounced all the way back up here. So no profit or loss at this point. If it does continue moving higher, we'll adjust. If not, we'll continue to monitor that. I did IWM, IBM, IWM. Uh, we took off the position in there, so we don't currently have one. Same with Q's, same with TLT, no position there. XLV, still looking for more of a down move in XLV. Remember, we put this on as just a kind of a contrarian uh, position looking for a pullback. It's starting to do so a little bit further down, and we'll be able to bank that one for a profit. XRT. Uh, we have got a strangle on still an XRT, not quite enough profit to take off there, but if we get a little bit of a move up, we'll take that off for a nice profit early next week. So I hope that was helpful. Everybody have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week.